Hello YouTube, Jeff Garcia here from Dreaming of Your Next Sunset. I'm here in Rockford, Illinois at the Fordham Dam, an exciting place to fish and a very great place to start fishing, to learn how to fish, particularly in the spring. Early spring, all these fish come up to the dam, they gorge on shad, they gorge on minnows, and it's a perfect opportunity to catch some decent sized fish. Uh, pursue your dream fish or you're catching fish to consume or whatever that's all different types of fishing and different situations and you need different tackles some people think that one rod is the ultimate rod it's not you have to study your situations you have to understand how to put the odds in your favor especially if you're fishing off the bank that's what most of my videos are going to be about is fishing off the bank I do fish off the off the boat from time to time, but most of my experiences and my success has been off the bank in different locations. They have not all been here at the dam, but this is where I learned a lot of stuff about fishing and a lot of strategies and a lot of a lot of about fishing basically. Um, another high percentage area, once you learn the basics of fishing, is creeks like the Morgan Creek which Levin's Lake empties into that, and then Morgan empties into the river. Our river fish move from these locations into all these little branches, these creeks here. And a lot of people have to understand these things because that's what makes you a more successful fisherman. So I plan to bring these things to you in the future and help you out as much as I can. My ways are not the concrete ways, they're not the best ways to do it they're the ways that I've been productive fishing you know and I hope that it helps you guys out that's what I'm here for that's my whole aim is to help you become better bank fishermen and I will share my ideas and strategies with you guys in the future I hope you guys you guys have a great day take it easy bye Hello everyone, this is Jeff Garcia from Dreaming of Your Next Hook Set. Welcome to my channel and thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the subscribes. I really appreciate it. Welcome to my channel. Buenos días o buenas tardes a todos porque ya es tarde aquí. Buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos a mi canal de YouTube. Yo soy Jeff Garcia de Dreaming of Your Next Hook Set. Y bienvenidos todos. Ahora el tema va a ser a uh, bagre. Vamos a hablar del bagre y de diferentes especies de bagre. Y lo vamos a hablar en inglés, pero si cualquier persona que tenga preguntas o que quiera hacer unas preguntas, ahí mándenme una pregunta en el YouTube. No hay problema con eso. Y en el futuro voy a hacer también a uh, episodes de en español también. So, todos bienvenidos y muchas gracias por todos los que le pican ahí like y hacen subscribe a mi canal. Uh, los aprecio mucho a todos y muchas gracias a todos. Muchas gracias. The topic today is channel catfish and flathead catfish. The unfortunate part to some people that uh, search YouTube and like watching YouTube videos and stuff is that in the early 90s when I started fishing, I mainly took pictures. I didn't get a lot of footage of my catches. And that, uh, in today's world, that kind of counts against you. But in my world back then, if you didn't have a picture of the fish you caught, it was a fish story. So in my case, I always took pictures and stuff. And I made small clippings, like I had a Canon camera that 
took some video, a couple seconds videos. I don't know if some of you guys have ever dealt with those type of cameras that just take a few seconds of video. But uh, yeah, that's the unfortunate part for some YouTubers that don't like watching uh, videos that have slideshows. So this is going to be slideshow slash some video clipping, small ones. And some were good videos, but they were done at night, so the quality wasn't that good. I hope you guys enjoy. To everybody that, that, that comes to my channel and wants to get to know me, wants to get to know my ideas, my views in fishing and, and fishing for different species. But my main thing is... Um, fishing off the bank and for many years just fished pretty much religiously for catfish and when I started getting more serious about catfishing was back in 97 that's about the time where I got a little bit more serious about fishing in 97 um, 98 a couple years after I got out of high school it was a way of getting away from everything. It was peaceful. I loved it, you know, and, and a lot of a lot of those times I fished by myself. So there's a good thing about fishing by yourself and there's a bad thing about fishing by yourself. And if you're not the research type guy, it kind of helps you in a way and it hurts you. <laughs> so let me explain the, the, the hurt part first. Well, always the bad news first. Well, if you're too too much to yourself in fishing, it's hard to learn different strategies, different ideas, and different outlooks of you know of people how they look at stuff and how do they uh, attack the situation. In other words, the, the the mission, you know, and the mission was to have fun fishing. Well, this is what happened back in '97 when I started fishing. I would hear these stories of people catching. Uh, blue catfish, flatheads, and channels. First of all, uh, in Rockford, in Rockford, Illinois, where I live, I don't think we get any blues. And as far as I've ever known, no one's ever caught one. People have said they've caught blue catfish up here, but I've never seen one myself. And all the years that I've fished for channel catfish or catfish just in general, I never came across a blue catfish. But for the most part, you know, maybe they were fish stories, who knows. But anyways, back to what started me fishing and what got my interest in fishing was the peacefulness, the quietness, and the strategy part of it. Every species of fish has a strategy. Every species of fish. And when it comes to catfish, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, it's not easy to to uh, crack the how would you say the combination basically but if you pay attention you do your research and you you're the type of person that soaks in the, the information and you're not the type of person that thinks you know it all and you'll be good you'll figure things out and and, and you'll be good unfortunately for me I didn't have a lot of people to teach me how to fish um, I got like how you say bits and pieces from people but anyways I started fishing with a Zepco probably a $10 rod uh, some 14 pound test a few sinkers eagle claw hooks it didn't matter what hooks they were the cheaper the better <laughs> that's how it was I figured a hook's a hook you think that line is line it don't matter what kind it is you know in those days that's you know Social media wasn't so wide, so everywhere, you know, and people kept to themselves. Nobody wanted to tell you the hook they used. Nobody wanted to tell you the line they used. I mean, even the reels they didn't want to tell you, the poles and, and their spots and where they caught their bait, what bait to use. So everything was like a mystery back in them years. And, and I imagine even further back, it was even worse. But anyways, uh, I started with the stink bait, dip bait they call it, liver, using liver and stuff for catfish, and I started fishing for channels. And to me, a catfish, if it had whiskers, it didn't matter what kind of catfish it was, if it had whiskers, it was a catfish. So I didn't really pay attention to different species and, 
Uh, I mean, even at the time, I didn't catch any flatheads, not even on accident. <laughs> With liver and, and stink bait, not even on accident I would catch them. You know, I'd catch a carp before I caught a flathead, but I didn't even know what a flathead was back then, you know. And I grew up in Texas, by the way. I grew up in Texas, and I don't remember if I ever caught some catfish over there or, or not. If I, ever, I think I did go fishing for catfish, but I went fishing for catfish in the ocean. And we caught, uh, I think uh, my my godfather took us to a, a base down in Texas. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was a base and, and it was ocean water. So it was gaff top, I think they called it. And it was big gaff tops. They were big ones. And that's about the closest I ever got to catching catfish. I do remember catching bluegills one time with my dad. One time, a long time ago, I was a little kid. I think I went fishing one time with my father and that was it but for the most part in 97 I started fishing I started liking it and and I just wasn't too crazy about the stink bait and the liver stink bait you got it all over you you stunk real bad uh, liver you had every fly in the country after you plus the bees you know so I wasn't too crazy about it and the fish weren't very big when I did catch fish they were like you would say, quote unquote, the eaters. You could eat them and they were small enough to eat. And But I was more interested in bigger, it's bigger it's catfish. You know, I, you'd hear these stories, you know, that, oh, so-and-so caught a seven pound channel over here. And so-and-so caught a 10 pound channel. And you were like, yeah, right. You know, those are fish stories. You didn't believe it because myself, my experience, I was catching a pound, pound and a half, two pounds at the most. You know, I remember my first two pounder. I thought it was a big deal. You know, oh man, I made a big fuss about it. And here, think about it. I was out of high school and I was making a big deal about a little channel, you know. But anyways, I became more intrigued and wanted to, uh, to figure out a way or find somebody that knew about it that was willing to share information. And I, uh, like I said, I was living in Texas and I moved here to Rockford, Illinois uh, in, when I was still going to high school. So when I got out of high school, I uh, visited my uncle. He lives here in, in Rockford. And he told me that he fished for catfish, you know. I didn't even pay attention to what type of catfish. He just said flathead. And I was like, well, it's a catfish, it's a catfish. I didn't even know what it looked like, to be honest. He's like, I fish for flatheads. And he was into flatheads. And, and I was like, man, uncle, why, why is it that every time I go fishing, you know, I don't catch but you know, a little one pound fish and, you know, a pound and a half and stuff. He's like, well, you're fishing the wrong bait, you know, you're fishing with, with the wrong bait. You know, if you're going to go after trophy fish, you have to, you know, use different baits and, you know, chicken livers ain't going to do it. Stink bait's not going to do it. And I'm like, you know, I just want to catch a, a three pounder or something, you know, and he's like a three pounder. That's all you want to catch. Oh, that's easy. Just keep fishing the way you're fishing. And I was like, you just, I just told you I really don't want to catch these little ones. And you're telling me I have a chance of catching a three pounder? He says, oh, you just haven't been fishing the right spots. But that bait that you're using, liver and stink bait, you'll catch a three pounder eventually. You know, and I was like, no, nah, I want to catch one now, you know. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what. First of all, the way that you pursue channel catfish is by the size of bait but you can't go too big on it but you cannot if you're really trying to catch five pounders eight pounders ten pounders he said i i think I, I i believe my uncle said that the biggest one that he had caught was 13 pounds and and i think he said 13 pounds he said 13 pounders you have to use a different type of bait and i was like yeah and i was like well what kind of bait i want to know man i'm, I'm i want to know He's like, well, why don't we get together, you know, one of these days or one of these weekends. I said, how about one of these weekends? And he laughed and he's like, oh, you really want to know, huh? I said, man, I'm tired of going, you know, to the rivers and trying to find different spots. And all I ever catch is these little ones. And I told him about my poison ivy issue. I couldn't, I'm really, I'm highly allergic to poison ivy and I can't. I can't just go anywhere and fish, you know what I'm saying? I got to look at my surroundings. If it's too woody, too too many, too too green, I should say, too, too many plants and stuff like that, I got to be careful because I'm like allergic to every plant on this earth, 
you know. So anyways, uh, he tells me, well, I'm, you come this weekend and I'm, I'm going to actually do some fishing this weekend and, and we'll, I'll take you out and catch some bait and stuff. And I, I asked him, I said, well, you know, um, where are we going to go? And he's like, don't worry about it. I'm going to take you to a couple creeks. I'm going to take you to a couple lakes or whatever, whatever we can do to catch some bait because that's not going to cut it, what you got there. If you want to catch channels, channel catfish. I said, okay, well, um, let's get together this weekend. And we got together and, and we went out and we caught this bait, you know, and I was like, man, this is cool. You know, these little baits, I've never seen them before. I, I was like, man, you just catch them with a little worm and a little hook and a bobber. And I was catching them and he was like, these are bluegills. And I was like, oh, bluegills. Okay, I, I think I remember catching some of these when I was a kid. I think we called them bluegills. And he's like, yeah, they're bluegills. And he's like, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're bluegills now. This is my uncle has been fishing for flatheads for a long time now. He tells me these are bluegills. And he says that he uses them to catch flatheads too. And I'm like, okay, you catch flatheads with these too? I said, well, you know, I, I tell him, you know, explain to me, what's a flathead? He's like, oh, I'll tell you that some other time. You're after channels. I'm going to show you. So he takes me to this little creek, pond, slash pond, behind some houses and stuff. It's not even a lake. It's like a creek. So anyways, we get there and we catch some of these bait fish, you know. And he says, okay, take that bucket there and go fishing to your locations. He didn't even give me a location. Like, he didn't want to, he, he didn't want to tell me. I thought he didn't want to tell me where to fish, but what it was is that I was fishing for channels and his thing was flatheads, you know, so that was a whole two different worlds, basically. So anyways, they gave me this bait and stuff and I went to my spots that I liked, you know, and at the time, the spots that I usually, that I usually went to fish was, was the Rockford Dam. I went there. I would go to uh, Martin Park every once in a while, not so much there. But I would go to 15th Avenue, under 15th Avenue, uh, the bridge there under 15th, 15th Avenue, between 15th Avenue and Kishwaukee, basically. And I would fish the, the Kishwaukee side. I wouldn't fish the South Main side. I'd fish this side. So I would fish there. And, and I was like, well, you know, first time out there with this magic bait that my uncle says, man, it's going to work awesome. And I get out there and I put this bait fish and I toss it out there and boom I catch the first one so I got this fish and I'm bringing him in I'm like wow this is a big one it's just a little two and a half three pounder right so anyways I cast again boom the biggest channel I had ever seen in my life it was like a four and a half pounder and oh, I'm thinking I'm the I'm the star man I'm thinking I'm the best fisherman in the world at this point and I'm like wow you know so that day goes on and I'm done. And a couple weeks later, I tell him, hey, I did real well with that bait that, that you told me about. And he's like, the baits that we caught? Yeah. I said, man, it was awesome. I caught a three and a half pounder or a four pounder or something like that. I really wasn't sure, but he was huge. I tell my uncle, he was big. He says, man, those are babies. You're catching those. He says, man, your spot's no good. I'm like, what do you mean it's no good? And he said, are you fishing a woody area? Like, a, there's a lot of wood, a lot of a lot of wood in the water. And I was like, yeah, somewhat. He says, that spot's no good right now. Those spots are good only when it's uh, loaded with logs and wood and stuff like that. I said, well, usually it is. He's like, well, wait until we get, a, you know, some flooding and it floods and it moves all that, all that, uh, the wood down the river and stuff and that spot will work really good for some nine pounders and eight pounders and stuff like that i said okay well that's fine he says i'm not too sure about your little zepco and your little pole there but hey if it's working for you that's fine but I, that will never work for flatheads and i'm like you, you mean my tackle won't work no that ain't gonna work i mean the zepco is okay he said but that noodle pole you got in that 14 pound test, if you get a hold of a nice 13 pounder that takes you under those logs, that 14 pound is going to give. And that pole might give. And I was like, nah, man, everybody says that, that there's monsters here. I haven't caught one. He's like, okay, you keep fishing the way you're fishing. You'll learn. <laughs> so anyways, he was like, um, 
well, good luck to you. And that's it. We, my uncle and I really never got together and fished anymore. But I knew he fished for flatheads. I kept that in mind. But anyways, years later, I'm fishing at the dam. And I run into this guy. His name, his name was, or is Gary. Uh, his name's Gary, an older man. And he's fishing for these catfish out here. And everybody talks about Gary. You know, at the river, everybody at the dam, everybody knows him. Everybody talks about him, how he, how he catches these big old channels, channel catfish, 50 pounders and, and 30 pounders. And I'm like, really channels? And that's the story that was told to me. So one day I'm there and, and I haven't met him yet. And I look at the stringer, he has a stringer and he's got a fish splashing, going crazy, you know, but you can't see the fish, you know, I can't see him. From where I'm up up top, I'm looking down and I'm looking at his stringer and I'm like, man, that that's a big boil in the water. That's that must be a big, big catfish. So, anyways, I never really get to see that fish, but I get to see him fight a 50-something pounder. And he pulls it out, and here comes this big brown monster-looking thing. I'm like, wow, what is that? And one of the guys that's there, he tells me that's a flathead. And then that's when I get the idea that that's a flathead. I said, well, what kind of fish is that? He's like, it's a catfish. It's a monster catfish at that. And I said, yeah, my uncle told me about flatheads before I told him. I said, that's a beautiful fish, man. That's a huge fish. And when he goes to put him on the stringer, I'm like, he's going to keep it? And he's like, yeah, he's going to keep it. Because Gary kept flatheads sometimes. I don't know if that of that size or not, but... He didn't keep them. And I was like, wow, he's not going to, you know, he's not going to keep them. Because I kind of, I kind of asked him, you know, uh, if he was going to, if he was going to keep them. I asked the guy and he was like, he answered me. Yeah, he's going to keep them. So I assumed he was going to keep them. Right. But anyways, uh, I see him pull both of them out. I couldn't believe the size of that. The one that was on the stringer too. He wasn't quite 50 pounds, but he was a huge one. So anyways, he pulls them out, and they help him out, and he starts taking pictures of them. Not to mention the fight. Oh, let me go back a little bit. The fight that he had with that 50-pounder was awesome, man. If I had had a camera, if I had a camera at that point, that would have been a nice video to see this skinny, probably 125-pound old man fighting these flatheads. It would have been exciting to, to film that. But anyways, uh, he takes some pictures, and then he does the one thing that, Everybody looked at him like he was crazy, like he was wrong. And I looked at him and I was like, man, I can't believe what's happening here. He gets both of those fish and one at a time, he lets them go. So you know what I was thinking in my mind. I was like, wow, he let those fish go, man. That is so cool. And there was a guy there, man, he's stupid. He spends all day here trying to catch those big monsters. And most of them, he lets them go. And sometimes he keeps some of them, but they're the small ones. And I'm like, wow, this guy doesn't see the, he doesn't see the big picture. I see it, but I know at this point, I'm not thinking what he's thinking. The guy's thinking, the guy that said that, he's thinking of taking them home and, and eating them, you know. But I'm thinking the other way. I'm thinking, man, I got a chance to catch that fish tomorrow. I'm going to be here at 5 in the morning to catch that fish. But of course, it doesn't work that way. Without the knowledge, without the know-how, without the experience. And how I seen him fight that fish, I learned a lot. Because down about 100 yards on the, on the Kishwaukee side of the river, on the, where, the, where the dam, where the spillway is, about 75 yards from there, is the hole that Gary fished religiously every day. I used to see him there. But it, it never happened to where I would see him catch a fish. So anyways, uh, I was so excited, man. When I seen him let go of those fish, I was like, I got a chance of catching me my personal best. And I'm going to do it. But anyways, uh, I, got, I, I wanted to meet the guy. And I really, really wanted to become friends with him. And Gary was real, because he had been in Vietnam. He, he really didn't trust too many people. And it took me it took me a while to get to know him to to get close to him. He didn't just let anybody in his circle like 
And he wouldn't. He was one of those guys. He didn't tell you the hook. He didn't tell you the line. He didn't tell you nothing of how he caught those fish. And a lot of the reason I later on learned from him was that everybody wanted to eat these fish. They wanted to take them out of the river system. And he he hated that. He he was Gary. I, once I got to know him, he was the type of guy that he would take a fish home if he if he really wanted to. Like if he wanted to eat some fish, fine, he would do it. But he wouldn't do it just to let them sit in the freezer or just to kill a big catfish or nothing like that. But anyways, I got close to him and he started teaching me a lot of a lot of cool things and. The one important thing that I that I really paid attention to him is he told me, he says, number one thing, I showed him my bait too. I showed him my bait that I was using to catch channels. And he was like, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to fish. I'm just going to tell you what works for me. But the green sunfish is like my third best bait for flathead. And I was like, your third? And this thing, ca this these catch a lot of channels he says yeah in some cases they catch flatheads too they have to definitely be of nice size but they don't catch as many flatheads as this bait and i was like i looked at the bait and yeah of course they look different and he's like this is a bluegill and i said no nah, you know i was thinking to myself that's not a bluegill but you can't tell the professional that he's wrong you can't tell him he's the one teaching you you know so i tell him so if, if those are bluegills and the ones I got are bluegills, and they look different. Why are they both bluegills? He's like, they're not. What you've been using is called a green sunfish. That's a green sunfish. That's a total different bait, you know. Um, and I give you some advice. If you if you want to catch these monster flatheads, start using bluegill, and you have to use six to eight inch bluegill, big bluegill. And I was like, wow, you know that I'm learning. You know, he's teaching me. There's another thing, he said, uh, when you fish for these flatheads, you need to know that they're in here in the spring, but they're not in here all year. These, these catfish, they're not, I mean, all year, excuse me, I'm sorry. He says, they're not in here the whole summer. They, I mean, you have your stragglers that'll stay in here because a lot of food does come down that river, but you have to know one thing about this river is that you have different temperatures. Just like you have different temperature above the dam, you have a different temperature below the dam because below the dam is shallower. It's, it's a lot more shallower than above the dam. So you have different temperatures right there. So some fish, like flatheads, in, in the flathead case, what I've learned, he said, flatheads, they like to go to more calm water, you know? And he's like, I got a rule that after the first month of spring, or a month and a half of spring technically if I don't if I if I can't get to the spots that I fish I won't fish the I'll fish the dam but if I can get to the spots that I really like to fish I won't fish at the dam and I said well why is that Gary he says because these fish start to move to their hunting uh, areas and they start to move to where they always have a deep hole nearby their hunting areas and they live in the deep hole or they even live off the banks and I'm like, live off the banks? He's like, yeah, they'll live off the banks, like under big boulders. And and he says, you know, people uh, catch these with their hands too, right? And I, that was another game. And he never really told me everything about that. But he basically let me know, don't think that you're going to come here and catch a flathead every day or every, every week at that. Because he says, I've been here just because it's convenient and I can't get to the other spots where I usually fish. I come here, but there's been times where in a whole season that I fish here, which is like three months, he said, I'll catch maybe 10 flatheads from here, from the dam area. But if you move from here, there's better locations and better places to fish. Awesome places. And I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, you know, that you're teaching me this stuff. He says, yeah, I don't tell everybody because some people, they're not appreciative and, and they abuse the situation. I was like, yeah, I understand that. I've seen that before. He's like, I, I just, I just rather stick to myself and stuff. And, and he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, if you want to start catching these big catfish, these flatheads, and, you know, catch trophy size, something to take a picture with and all that. 
you need to you need to experiment with other baits uh just that green sunfish don't get too attached just to that bait because there's all kinds of baits and stuff he says i'll tell you what man uh, do some research on it and find out more about it and you you'll 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 see that even just bluegill is not just the only bait but it's a high percentage bait it's a bait that you're going to catch you know big size flatheads and you're going to catch in numbers i mean even the small ones will swallow a six inch bluegill seven inch bluegill i've had them down to six pounds four pounds swallow a whole bluegill i was like you're kidding me man he says yeah because it's a predator that fish is a predator he, he's he's not really a scavenger he's a predator and if he does eat something that's cut it's going to be fresh so i never forgot this knowledge and it was it was really cool to learn from him but the real learning part he told me he says there's a second part to this there's a twist to this then i said you know because i was appreciating i told him i appreciate everything you tell me and stuff and everything you teach me and he tells me there's a second part to this if you don't fish you don't learn if you don't if you're not gonna wet a line you're not gonna learn i can tell you all this till your head turns blue but if you don't fish you're not gonna learn because you're gonna learn other ways too not not every fisherman knows everything you're gonna learn from fishermen you're gonna fishermen are gonna learn from you beginners are gonna learn from you everything the information i'm telling you you give you pass it down to somebody that's a good person too that's that's worth it that's worth telling them and i'll tell you another thing that i want you to remember wherever you fish you keep that place clean and i was like yeah gary i noticed that you really get upset when people make a mess in areas he says yeah because all good spots can come to an end and it's always because people don't care because people make a mess they bring their bad habits from home to the river too i was like wow he's really harsh you know but he was true he was telling the truth He's like, don't ever make a mess where you fish. And if you see somebody make a mess, it's not worth a, a fish fight. It's not worth an argument. When they leave, if you can find it in your heart and you've got a plastic bag with you, pick the garbage up, put it in the bag, and go on with your life. And I was like, wow, that's that's really cool. That's really deep, you know. He said, but yeah, man, if, if you, if you want to catch these trophy fish, uh, Start, you know, doing a little of the things that I told you. And he says, definitely carry carry you a camera. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I definitely want to take some pictures, man, of these fish. Yeah, definitely get your camera. So, and, and at that time, I didn't really, I had the VHS camera, but I didn't carry it around, you know, to videotape nothing. I just took pictures. Because the saying was, if, if you don't have the picture, it's a it's a story you know it's a it's a fish story you know and nowadays you can have the pictures and youtube there's a lot of youtubers that they don't like going to a channel that's all pictures you know so that's why i'm explaining my my situation here a lot of my fishing started in 97 98 and i would just take pictures and let some of these fish go a lot of the channels if they were eaters and i wanted to eat some fish i kept some you know what i'm saying and and but i was respectful too you know what i'm saying i really believe that people should be respectful you know don't 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 take advantage don't abuse the situation you know what i'm saying but yeah i mean uh, channels i kept them there was another thing that he told me if you don't know how to clean fish don't keep fish don't keep them some people believe you just take the guts out and that's a clean fish but it's not it's not there's a there's a process some of these fish you gotta you gotta remember a lot of these fish are bottom dwellers you know like the flathead not so much because he's a predator he likes to eat his bait live and he was like blue catfish they like to eat their bait fresh but channels is more of the scavenger of the three and he's like uh you'll catch some nice channels i mean don't give up on your channel the your your goal for the channels don't give up on that because you'll catch some nice ones and uh and green sunfish is a bait that works really good he and he told me he's like uh your uncle he didn't tell you that these green sunfish there's a certain size that channels really like and i was like well tell me you know and he's like no nah, i'm gonna let you figure it out you need to do some fishing and figure it out and i was like okay so it took me a couple years and 
and I'll share this with you guys the green sunfish for channels up to about I'd say about 10 pounds I'd say about 10 pounds you could use you can get away with using uh, the green sunfish but it has to be at least about two inches two inches big and another bait that works really good is baby shad baby shad works really good for for channel catfish too i learned that along the way but anyways um uh, uh, it was exciting i started catching five pounders and eight pounders and ten pounders i believe my my heaviest catfish i caught was pushing about 13 pounds i didn't have a scale that night and so i couldn't weigh it but a lot of my uh, uh this video here that went the reason about the, the reason I'm doing this whole uh, like narrating thing and talking to you guys about this number one I have fun doing it I, I like doing it and and uh, to me there's to me I always say you know what if you got a story share it as long as it's true you're good so that's a good thing but anyways what else what I wanted to tell you guys is this that I took a lot of pictures and not too many videos and even on the flatheads the flatheads I've caught I've caught plenty of flatheads. I did a lot of a lot of I took a lot of pictures I didn't videotape and uh, my Canon camera had a little I think it had like a little 10 second that you could do 10 second videos with it so I have some of those you'll see some in this in this uh, video here that they're little clippings little small clippings and stuff and you'll see me there man when I was 24 years old <laughs> you'll see me there you'll see the pictures um, another thing about three years ago I uh, I was getting away from fishing and I had hit a point in my life where I was going through a lot of things in life and fishing really really pulled me out of it and the will to live and to to, to want to do better in life and and I started uh, paying more attention to my health you know and my weight and stuff and I had gotten to I had ended up weighing about 460 pounds and man I, I lost about 130 something pounds 130 plus pounds and I got down to about I think I was 340 or something man and I loved it because it reconnected me with fishing it connected me with the outdoors I was a happier person and it really helped me in life you know the one thing that I will say you know that really really pushed me also was the love for fishing uh, fishing is a very very therapeutical and I, I really I really enjoy it I really love it man and I, I love this YouTube thing now I'm fairly new to it like I just got my GoPro a year and a half ago it's the first GoPro I, I own and here we are you know 2018 you know so and I have a JVC camera that I that I, I got like four years ago it's a nice camera it's a nice little high definition camera but it's not as good like uh it's not as good as the gopro you know the gopro that i have is more modern technology and stuff and, and it works better but my tackle has gotten better i went to a bait store i remember years ago and i was in there with gary and gary was like you know that's the rod you need there this was before i even before i even started even catching flatheads really I go in the base store. That's a little story I'm going to tell you guys. We go in the base store and Gary's like, uh, you know that little bass pole you have? He called it a bass pole. I was like, yeah. He's like, if you really want to fish for flatheads, you know, this is the pole you're going to need right here. And he pointed at this rod. That rod was 10 foot. He's like, it was a 10 foot rod, eagle claw. And then they had the, the, they had the ugly stick rods too. And he's like, these these two rods right here, you need to pick one. You need to pick one of these rods. And I was like, why? I'm not fishing for shark. He says, haven't you learned anything? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're not going to go flathead fishing. Well, at least not with me, he said. He's using that type of tackle that you got there. And by the way, you're going to buy that pole, he said. And you're going to buy these sinkers over here too. Because you're not going to be asking me for sinkers and losing my sinkers because you're using that noodle pole that that you get hung up at the bottom of the river and then you want to pull and pull your sinker out of the, the hang up with a noodle pole like that. 
So he was, he was, you know, he was already schooling me right there. And I was like, nah, I don't know about that pole. He's like, think about it. Better think about this twice. You need that pole. You need one of those poles right there. Uh, he says, if, and honestly, I'd get the nine footer. That's what he said. He said, I got the 10 footers, but sometimes they're a little, it gets a little complicated with the 10 footers because the 10 footers being like surf rods, you know. But anyways, I got me a nine footer. I believe it was a nine footer. I got me a nine footer and, and he was right. He was right. If you're going to fish tailwaters, dams, spillways, where it's rough, I mean, there's logs, there's, man, there's cars in the river. You, everybody up, knows Jimmy? that, that there's up, all kinds of stuff in the river. <laughs> so up, he's like, get you that rod there and, and, and get you a nice reel. You know, it doesn't have to be $50 or $60, but get you a decent reel, you know. they. Uh, he's like, uh, Quantum makes some nice ones. Eagle Claw makes some nice ones. Uh, Abu Garcia makes some nice ones. So just pick you out one. Probably like over a 4,000. You know, I was like, a 4,000? I didn't even know what that meant. You know, I didn't even know what he meant by that. But, uh, yeah, um, we did that, and, and I got to know him real good. I learned a lot from him. And then we lost track. You know, I stopped fishing the dam and I started fishing different places and stuff like that. And I would, you know, welcome him to go, but he was used to his ways and and fishing his locations and stuff like that. And basically, I kind of got the point that, you know, I schooled you, I taught you, go on with your life. And I hope my, my information that I gave you helps you and I hope you're blessed and you, you fulfill your your personal best catfish that you want to catch and stuff. And he was the one that told me that not to believe those stories about blue catfish being there at the Rockford Dam. There's no such thing. He says, you got to go down south to catch those blue catfish, you know. And uh, that was it. And I did more research. Uh, I found out that uh, in no between North Dakota and Minnesota, there's a river called the Red River. And if you really want to catch some big channel catfish, that's, that's the place to go. I mean, they got unbelievable, but they got 25 pounders over there. And if you go into the Canadian side, they got some big, big catfish over there. And um, I learned that, you know, some people told me about it. And then I seen some TV shows. Uh, uh, what was it? Doug Stangy? Yeah, Doug Stangy. He fished in the Canada side and uh, the Lidners. I learned a lot from those two, those two fishing shows. Great people, man. I, I love their shows. And... I take my hat off to Steve Douglas. I learned a lot from Steve Douglas years ago. That guy is very informative. That guy, man, he, I'm sure he's taught millions of people how to fish for blue cat. Um, there's a lot of other YouTubers that I've learned a lot from and that's one guy there that I can, that I can, uh, that I can mention. Detro's another one. Uh, he's up here, up, up north somewhere. Detro, he catches flatheads. Man, that, that guy there too. And in the bass department, I got some some YouTubers that I really, man, look, I look up to them guys. They, they, you learn a lot from YouTube, from certain YouTubers, and, and they're good people, man. And they're very informative, and you can tell the passion they have, that they want people to catch fish. Uh, informative fishermen, that's a, that, that guy there, man, in the bass department, man, he he's... I like that guy. He he's a good fisherman, and I've learned a lot from him too. You know, a lot, a lot from that guy. But uh, the usuals, I mean, Bill Dance, uh, Hank Parker, Roland Martin, Scott Martin, uh, all those guys are legends, man. They're legends in fishing and all types of species. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you got a. Uh, Iconelli, which is a real down-to-earth guy, he man, real cool, and you know, those people like that, man, they're, they're they're believe it or not, they're jewels to the fishing world, man. They're they're people that, man, you learn a lot from these people, man. And if you really pay attention, they love the sport too. Not that, not that they just because they get paid, but but they really they really uh, they really connect with people, and a lot of those people. They, they they meant a lot to me years ago and now you know what I'm saying Hank Parker was another one that man I used to I used to like watching his fishing show you know real nice and now you got all these saltwater guys that man there's a lot of saltwater guys there man there are people to look up to man that guy from uh, he passed away a couple years ago I, I uh, Jose Wahebi from uh, Spanish Fly 
it, man, I used to love to watch his show, man. A real down-to-earth guy, too. You know, man, just seemed like a real cool guy that if you met him in person, there'd be no reason why you wouldn't get along with these people that I've mentioned. You know, uh, some of them got, like, you can tell they got loving hearts, man. They're real good people, man. Uh, and I take my hat off to all these guys and women that, even women that I've learned, I've learned a lot of things from, there's some good women that, man, they know some fishing. I'm telling you, in the saltwater world, there's a couple women out there, man, they do some damage. They, they're they teaching a lot of people how to fish, and that's really good that, that women, and kids too, kids, young teenage kids, you know, some of them in their early teens doing so well with YouTube, man, I'm happy for them. I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this. But yeah, shout out to all those people, and man, they're actually the ones that move me towards starting to do YouTube videos, you know. And here in Rockford, uh, I haven't really met, like, the person that, that has that love for fishing, like myself, and that, that really appreciates the outdoors and stuff, and I haven't met that person yet. I'm still looking to see if I meet that person. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, this uh, video here and you find it interesting because I'm sorry that I don't have a lot of video clippings, and uh, I'm... I guess you could say from the old school, we just took pictures, you know, <laughs> we took a lot of pictures of stuff, but, or of fish, you know, and, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the pictures, you know, a lot of my fish, uh, I would have to come home sometimes because I didn't have my, uh, camera and I'd take pictures of them, especially the flatheads, the flatheads, I'd come home, take some pictures or borrow someone's camera, take some pictures and go take them back to the river. I, I only live. I live, what, uh, one, two, three, about four blocks from the river here, and I'm five blocks from the dam. Like, um, I would, I walk and fish, like I bass fish too. I, I walk and fish, like I'll walk to Mississippi Gardens, and that's three miles from here. I walk there, fish, have a great day, and come back home. You know, that was my cardio. And like I said, you know, my health became very important a couple years ago, and. I've kind of slacked off lately, but I'm going to get back to it. Uh, my, uh, my personal best run was actually nine miles, uh, two hours of running, so I was very happy about that. You know, I'd never run, I'd never ran three miles in high school, you know, and I played a lot of sports. I played football, basketball, baseball, I did it all. So, but anyways, I was real happy of that accomplishment. Uh, I knocked off 130 plus pounds and like I said, I've slacked off a little bit, but I'm going to get myself back together. You know, the, we all go through things in life that, that derails you, and, and you have a hard time trying to get back on the, on the track, and that's what's happened to me. But I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to get myself together, and it's going to be for the love of fishing and for the love of my channel, my YouTube channel. Dreaming of your next hook set. I'm telling you guys, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm going to get the videos together. I'm going to have better lighting. If you guys get a chance, check out my Walmart video. Check out my blue catfish video. You guys will like that. First time fishing for blue catfish. The first blue catfish I caught was 59 pounds. How blessed can you be to catch a beast like that? And then to, to say, I let him go. I let that fish go. Man, I, I was so proud of myself. I, and anybody should be proud, man. You let those fish go, man. And uh, just appreciate it, you know. Let those let those big monsters go. Let them go. Let them live, you know. And and let somebody else catch them, you know. To see that big excitement, because that excitement, you can explain it to somebody, but until they go through it, they really can't feel what you feel. You know what I'm saying? So, my first blue catfish was a 59-pound blue catfish. People dream of that. And then I came back like a week later from Florida. I was coming back from my vacation from Florida and stopped in Chattanooga, again, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and caught a 42-pounder and a 30-pounder. And they all lived another day, man. They all, I let them all go. Catch and release, man. I, I let them all go and... Man, it, it was lovely, man. It was lovely to do that. And to and I experienced it at night all by myself, too. It, it, was, it was cool, you know. 
it was really cool I, I took uh, pictures man I took a lot of pictures of those fish you know I even have some of the fight you know you got to check out that blue catfish video that was a very exciting uh, video for me it was an exciting day and I tell you uh, uh, right before that that experience I caught a big flathead big old flathead uh, a couple weeks before that experience I caught it at Martin Park it's a park here in Rockford Illinois that's a nice spot too that I really really like a lot it, a couple years ago it was it was way better now I don't know if it's because of the floods and it's moved all the the habitat there I don't know I don't know but it changed it changed and, and that could be it had a couple floods in the last couple years that have moved everything around and it's different but I still love those spots like I said I don't have a lot of options because of the poison ivy deal and I fish mainly if you want to stay away from poison ivies and stuff you got to fish the top of the dam before the spillway and you'll find some some decent spots they're not the best spots but you'll find some decent spots the best spots are downriver below the dam but for that you probably need a kayak you know or or you definitely can't be allergic to poison ivy or any types of poison salmic or plants like that because <laughs> you'll get yourself in trouble in a heartbeat you know but i hope you guys enjoy this uh this video i hope you guys enjoy my channel and i hope it grows and it does good and it's going to be a tri uh, trilingual <laughs> channel i want to speak uh, spanish some portuguese and definitely you know english but um i hope you guys enjoy it and I welcome anybody, anybody to come aboard and and have fun and share their stories too, you know. Um, Y'all take it easy and hasta la próxima vez, mis amigos del canal, uh, todos bienvenidos como siempre les he dicho. Uh, espero que les guste el video, no va, no va a tener muchas uh, partes de video en, en este YouTube, uh, en este video de YouTube, va a tener muchas fotos y así. Pero espero que se diviertan uh, y en el futuro les voy a traer el video porque ya, ya, me, ya, ya alcancé la tecnología, ya. Ahora sí tengo que apurarme a, a hacer las cosas bien y todos bienvenidos, como dije, y ojalá que les gusten mis videos. Hasta la próxima vez, yo soy Jeff Garcia de Green of the Next Hook Set. You guys take piece it of easy bait. and keep catching them We're fish. Try them out. Hey, catch and release, guys. Don't keep everything. You know, catch and release. Give them a chance and give a chance to another person to catch a fish. You guys take it easy. There we go. Make sure the Bye -bye. scales are not on the point so you don't lose a fish. He doesn't look too active, but he better get active because where he's going, it's a danger zone. And we caught this one here and we lost a number of a couple of them. So we had a good time, but what I was gonna tell you guys is once you have you know your little fish fry fish, your your fish that you kept for your fish fry. Don't keep these fish. Let them go. When you run out of fish, get you another fish. But let, let these fish go, especially the real big ones, because those are trophies. That could be anybody's trophy. But we're going to go ahead and let this go, so we're going to videotape it, videotape this, us letting it go. It'll go pretty quick, so. Being never even.
Two flathead lovers. For all you flathead lovers, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Hand size bait. Can't beat that. Look at that hand. Look at that bluegill. Freaking cat. Going for some flatheads. It's a nice size bluegill. I mean, it's not a six, seven inch bluegill, but it's a nice one. Six ounce weight, because that's what you need here. But yeah, we're going to try for flatheads, see what happens. That's a nice eight dot kale hook. We'll see what happens. Rockford King Cat with a little small one. one go. I let go one bigger than this the other night. Probably twice the size of this. I don't keep the real big ones anyway. Nice. Rockford King Cat from Rockford, Illinois with another flathead. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Jeff Garcia here. One of the top five flathead catfish baits. And I do mean the top five. Real nice bait. Uh, it's a yellow bullhead. 
And they have different uh, colored bullheads, brown and black bullhead, but the yellow bullhead is the one that we have in our area. I use it, it's pretty good. And of course, it has to be a certain size, and the bigger the better for 50 pounds and up of flathead catfish. Um, it gives you a better chance of hooking the big ones. This is just another bait. I have a couple videos I'm going to make of different baits, and this is just another one. I did a, Earlier I did the video on uh, green sunfish, now I'm doing the bullhead. But anyways, I'm going to show you a bullhead, and the ruler is to measure it. Um, but anyways, I'm going to show you one. Yeah, I get this one that's looking at us. This is the yellow bullhead. Put this ruler down a little bit. Hold them. I'll just lip them. Anyways, this is what they look like. Just like regular catfish. Actually, they resemble a flathead. Flathead absolutely hate them. <laughs> uh, I heard, I heard, and I did some research. I never really came up with a with a full understanding on the research of it because a buddy of mine had told me that flathead hate them because they eat their eggs. Um, I found one article of it, but they weren't so sure if that's the reason. So I, I'd say 50% maybe. 50% not because the article wasn't for sure on that. But anyways, they look just like a flathead. The tail, you can see, like a flathead. Um, the yellow belly, the yellow bullhead, that's what it looks like. There it is. We'll do like a little five second in case someone wants to get a still picture of it. This is a little smaller one, um, but it is worth for the 50 pound and up. The smaller ones, like I said, for channels. But anyways, we'll get the ruler and measure it so you guys get an idea of the measurement of it. Put the tail right at the end. This is right at a nine inch bullhead. This is Jeff G. I fought this guy for about 15, 20 minutes. And I brought my big boy ride today.
cut out, baby. Down. Don't let them go down. Let me get this bell. Just keep reeling. Oh, you're good. You're good. He's right here at the fucking. You're good. Don't let him. Don't let him get get a snag. It's a nice one. Can you get him down there? No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Don't force him. That's what you got to drive for. That's what you got to drive for. Don't let your line touch right there. That's a flathead. Jesus. Going a little bit. Let me put my glove on. Just hold them. Don't don't rub the rocks too much. Bring them to this flat one over here. Hold on. We're gonna get them. Just take take your time. Right here. Bring them this way. He's fighting. Just take. Don't let him rub the rocks. He's rubbing the rocks. Yeah, you're, you're good. No. I don't want to put my hands on the line. Bring them this way again. Take your time. Got him. I thought it was boring here. I didn't say that. Huh? I didn't say that. You're five. I caught a fish. Yeah, and you didn't catch a little one either. Yeah, of course he's beautiful. Cut his ass on Bluegill? Uh, this one was Shad. That Shad? Yeah. Wow. Good job, man. That's the way to watch a pole. Did the bell ring at all or no? No. It's... Well, you want to go back to the other spot, right? Uh-huh, that's what I thought.